Hey everybody, how's it going? Shane with Shaw, RSW Guitars here. Um, this is video number two of the Gravedigger guitar build we're going to be doing. In this uh, video, we're pretty much going to be starting off with the actual building processes. Um, and we're going to be starting with the fretboard on this one. Um, I usually don't do that. I've never done it before. There's no reason to say that you can't. The fretboard is one of those things that uh, you can pretty much build it anytime during uh, the actual project that you're working on. Uh, you know, you can choose to do it very first like we're doing it here. Or you can do it further on down the road pretty much at any time. But if you are going to do it further on down the road, you just have to know um, what the final dimensions and stuff and, you know, the final radius, things like that of your fretboard are going to be, um, you know, from the get-go of the build. So if you're not going to if you're not going to build it now and you're going to build it down the road, make sure you know the specs of what you, the, fi the finished product is going to be. Um, that is good because you are going to need those measurements to help you out along on a couple of the other uh, steps in the build. Um, reason why I'm choosing to do the fretboard on this one first is um, just because basically of the LED fret markers. Uh, you know, I'm kind of excited about them. I want to see what they look like when they're in there and stuff. And, uh, you know, I want to see if, you know, um, maybe seeing them lit up and stuff might give me other ideas for uh, the design of this instrument. Still working on the blueprints right now, about uh, halfway through on that. So uh, there's they're not quite complete yet, so there's still areas that I can, you know, make other improvements and stuff on if if I see fit. Um, the fretboard usually is a long process. It's, it takes a long time, well, a lot of the build time to uh, do all the work that's entailed in the fretboard. Um, so with that being said, we're probably going to get going on it. So first we're going to take a blank of uh, African Ebony that I got here. We're going to mark out the fret slots, we're going to cut them, uh, radius the board, um, you know, mark out the, uh, the fret markers themselves, do some routing in the back of the neck that needs to be done to, uh, you know, so that we can have all of the electronics sunken in to the actual fretboard itself. And then, uh, you know, tapering the fretboard and then uh, finishing up, getting it ready for... Um, getting ready to look nice and uh, ready to install on an actual instrument. So we're going to start off here, we're going to go pick our piece of um, African Ebony and we're going to lay out the fret slots. Okay, we got a piece of uh, African Ebony here. We're going to be using for our, our fret board and uh, now that we've got the end of the board all squared up, what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the fret slots. So we're going to need a couple tools for this. Handy dandy pencil, uh, tri-square, of course your piece of stock, and another important thing, a list of the measurements from the nut to the fret uh, for the corresponding fret scale that you're using. We're going to be using a 25 and a half inch, pretty popular. Uh, it's generally the Fender Strat. Um, fret scale amongst many many other instruments but um, one thing we have to do when we're measuring these out and uh, laying these out on this board is we have to make sure that we're measuring from the nut down to the fret and the reason why is because as you can see here we're dealing with some pretty small measurements uh, as you can see it's uh, they're, they're millimeters and they're to three decimal places so that's that's a pretty small measurement and if you're off by about a quarter millimeter on each of these frets then what's going to happen is you're if you're measuring fret to fret these uh, any error in any of these measurements is going to compound to the next fret so by the time you get down to 24 frets and you're off by a quarter millimeter you know you're going to be off by about four or five millimeters by the time you get to the bottom and uh, we can't have that so that's why we always have to measure from the nut back to the first fret so for example for the first fret we have 36 and 35 and 36 millimeters, 36.353 millimeters, excuse me. So what we need to do is we need to measure from the nut side, that's already been squared off here, 36.353 millimeters, you know, mark it, uh, mark it with, with a tri-square, so we've got a nice uh, square line there. And then for the second fret, instead of measuring from the first to the second, we've got to go back to the, back to the nut and measure down to the second fret and our measurement of course is 70.665 so we measure 70.665 from this point and we do this all the way down the fretboard 
uh, every single fret. So that we know if there's any error in each of these measurements, it's not going to it's not going to compound to the next fret and then to the next fret and then to the next fret and so on and so on. So any error, um, you know, you'd rather if you're going to have any error at all, you'd rather only have it on on one fret where it's really not going to be noticeable. I mean, if you're out by, you know, uh, by a quarter of a millimeter on one of your your frets, you it's the the instrument's still going to intonate properly when you fret on that fret. It's, it's it, the, you know, the error is going to be minimal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mark all that out and uh, get it ready. And when we get them all marked out, we'll be able to take it over to the sled and, cu and cut them up. Okay, so as you can see, we've got all our fret slots marked out here. Um, each one uh, placed by measuring from the nut back to the location of the fret. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking we're pretty accurate here and I think we're just about ready to take it over to the sled and uh, cut these things up. Okay, so what we need to do here is uh, before we cut any of these slots, we have to set the depth of our blade. And how we're going to do that is we're just going to take a piece of the fret wire that we're going to be using, which is right here, and we're going to simply rest it on top of the blade here, and then we're going to lower our blade just until the bottom of the tang sits on top of the sled here. And we're looking pretty good right there. Okay, so now we're ready to cut our slots and uh, we're just going to go through, cut all 24. Now one thing to remember is that when we have this here and we run it through the blade, as we run it through the blade and we get past the blade, we want to lift it up off of the sled before we pull the sled back through the blade. Uh, we don't want a double cut happening on any of these slots because uh, if we do that there's a chance that these um, that these frets, uh, the tangs are not going to grab into the slots because uh, they will be uh, kind of, they'll be a little bit wider than the actual blade if we try to pull it through twice. So we're just, we're going to run it through the blade, pick it up off of the sled, pull the sled back in front of the blade and then do our next slot and so on all the way down the fretboard until we get them all done. Okay, we got these slots all cut up here, uh, looking pretty good. One through to 24. Now the next step is going to be uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start setting, uh, doing some of the process to um, install some of these LED fret markers. First thing what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to mark out and we're going to drill the holes for the actual bulbs themselves and then we're going to flip the piece over and uh, I'm going to do a mock-up of the electronics because the electronics are going to have to be routed in or they're going to have to be installed in channels that are run down here so that the, ba um, the back face of this fretboard sits flat um, onto the neck blank itself uh, when it's all glued up together. We don't want any of the electronics getting in the way of that process, so we're going to have to we're going to have to recess them into the back of the board. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my mock-up of my LED as well, and uh, we'll come back. I'll show you what that looks like and show show you how it's going to look like all lit up, and then uh, show you how that's going to help us actually determine where we're going to route on the back of this thing. Okay, so as you, as you can see here, we've got a mock-up of our LED uh, fret markers here. And uh, I've just done this using uh, a normal aluminum tape that you would, uh, you know, use for any kind of HVAC purposes or whatever. But uh, it does conduct on the one side. It does not conduct on the, on the adhesive side. So keep that in mind when you're doing any kind of mock-up like this. Um, when I actually go to do the real job, I will probably use wire to do it, um, except for these two strips coming up the, uh, the outsides here, which is just the positive and negative bar, I guess you could call it. But you can see here, I've got four LEDs per loop, and uh, yeah, they're all lighting up, so that's good news. And I'm going to see if I can flip this over here. Uh, without loosening the, the battery yeah there we go and this gives you a rough idea of what our fretboard is going to look like now like I said before uh, all this is going to be recessed into the actual fretboard itself 
And uh, I'll go into a little more detail of that because it's not just uh, one straight recess. Um, but when we actually get to that step, uh, I will explain that further. But that's generally going to let us know where we need to route and um, where our circuits are going to lie so that we can uh, go ahead and route those recesses and everything will fit properly. Okay, so now that we've got that all working and stuff, I'm just disconnected here. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our actual fretboard and we're going to drill some holes, lay them out and drill some holes, and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to lay out the routing. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've laid out all of the LED fret markers here on our fretboard. And all I've, all I've done is I've simply uh, just drew a center line on our blank here and then uh, everywhere where there's going to be a fret marker I just simply took a measurement between the frets and then divided it in half and then, uh, put a mark there on each and every one. Um, 12th and 24 frets where we're going to have the doubles all I did was I drew my uh, my midpoint between the two fret slots and then I measured uh, from the outside edge here from where we're going to be where, where we're going to actually cut the fretboard off when we taper it I measured from here to the center line and then uh, just brought it in a third of that measurement. So this happened to be 30 millimeters. So we just moved this up from the edge 10 millimeters and we did the same on the top. And did the same here on the 24th fret as you can see. And that's going to give us our exact locations for the double fret markers. Um, one thing you'll notice here is I went ahead and I cut three more fret slots. Uh, I w I've always wanted to try a 27 fret guitar, so it looks like I'm going to be building one now. I had enough fretboard left to do so, so I went ahead and did that. I'm undecided whether or not I'm going to put a marker here. I might just stop them at the double 24 there. Um, I guess I'll figure that out once I get to the holes and kind of, you know, take a look at it and see, see what I think. But uh, there we are. We're all laid out, ready to go. And um, we'll take this over to the drill press and we will center punch all of these holes so we can make sure we get them nice and accurate and then we'll take a 3 16 drill bit and drill right the way through because we're going to be installing these LEDs from the back and they're going to pop up through the back and sit flush with the top okay let's go over to the do the uh, drill press okay we're over at the drill press and as you can see we have center punched all of these marks here make sure we don't have any skating around uh, with this drill bit here 316 drill bit in there and uh, so yeah we're just gonna go ahead and drill these holes okay so we've got all our holes drilled here you can see uh, double at the 12th double at the 24th and I ended up uh, not putting this one on here um, you know I just think it would look better if uh, you know the LEDs terminated with a double at the end there just on the 24th so you know I just elected to leave that last one off so uh, what I've also done is I've marked the taper on the fretboard here and I've done it on both sides and you'll see here on this other side what I've done is I've taken um, the white pencil crayon and I have just roughed out our channels where all the wiring is going to be put on the back here. Uh, it needs to be sunken in so that um, we can go over it with a two-part epoxy so we have a flat surface especially on these middle ones we want a flat surface because our truss rod is going to sit under there and uh, we don't want it uh, we don't want the electronics to interfere with the operation of that. Uh, so I also um, drew my taper lines on this side as well to make sure that you know these channels stayed within these lines I also uh, move these lines in a bit to give me a little bit of play so if I do go over by accident it's uh, you know it's not going to be a huge problem okay so we'll be uh, what I'm going to do here another thing I have to explain here is um, I need to around the edges here or around the holes sorry I need to route out some material and uh, the reason for that is because uh, the flat top LED bulbs that uh, I'll be using um, for this project have almost like a top hat type profile to them they have like a rim that goes around the back of the bulb um, 
And these holes that I had have drilled here um, just allows the top part of the bulb to go through just perfect. So if I drill that down to a, to a spe uh, specific depth, then it will give that kind of rim on the back of the bulb a little ledge to sit on. And uh, I just got to, you know, keep playing with the depth and get, uh, bringing it down a little bit more, a little bit more until the front part of the bulb sits flush with uh, the front of the, the fretboard here. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start off by doing those, re uh, those parts around the holes with uh, this little guy right here. It's just like a little inlay bit. And I'll just get my height set with that and I'll go around and do around the bulbs. And then I'll come back with a 1 8 bit in the uh, in the colt there and I'll just freehand all these channels uh, the channels don't have to be perfect we just have to make sure that they stay within these guidelines here of the taper of the neck and um, you know you don't want to take away too much material either because then it's less stuff that you have to fill in with epoxy when you're done okay so we're gonna work on routing all these cavities out and um, then we'll be able to get started uh, working on the electronics. Uh, actually, before the electronics, we'll probably end up radiusing the board. We may pre-wire the electronics and just kind of lay them in place, make sure everything works, and then we'll just set that uh, set the circuits aside for right now until after we get it radiused. Then we'll go in uh, and we'll actually install them, put the epoxy over top, and then we will uh, sand any parts that are sticking up a little bit too far or whatever. Uh, we're going to sand those flat. These ones in particular will on the 24th and the 12th will stick up because the board will be radiused and everything will be uh, Everything will be recessed in the back here at the same depth So the bulbs are of course going to stick out on these ones on the 12th and 24th So we will need to address that and not only that but um, What I'm going to do is I'm not going to polish these after I sand them I'm not going to polish them back to a glass like finish and uh, the reason being is um when the bulb is really shiny it tends to be darker and I don't want to have these on all the time and these are going to be hooked up to a switch so whenever they're not on I want to have kind of a frosted look to the bulbs because uh, you'll be able to just be able to see them better when the um, when the LEDs aren't aren't turned on so uh, I, I, I um, when I sand them I'll probably sand them up to about maybe a 400 but I won't go much farther than that and uh, yeah they'll be a lot easier to see that way Okay, so I'm going to get to work on routing this stuff out, and then, uh, yeah, then we'll uh, set up the radiusing jig.